the concept phase. So for my sketches, um, basically what I do is to uh, start with 3D. I want to make sure that everything is correct. Um, and that starts with a, a human. So I import a dummy with the real world measurement. When I do start an environment, I I always start with the ground. It's it's important for me to uh, to start to build it uh, from the ground up. When I look at my scene, I'm starting with cubes, cubes or very simple geometric shapes. I'm basically trying to find the perspective. Once I have the shapes in place, later on that will actually help me to uh, find the perspective in 2D when I will st actually start to draw on it. I'm using the 3D to help me define my perspective guideline. Doing this step in 3D will allow me to find good camera angles. It is like going on location and looking through a camera, a camera that actually has a lens. This will allow me also to make better choices based on quote unquote physical parameters. Uh, what I'm doing for the, the background buildings is the same principle, you know. I'm trying to find the perspective that those buildings in the background will, will actually have. So I'm giving them a bit of volumes to help me uh, trust the perspective. Now that I have my camera in the shot, I can visualize it better. I can make my angles more accurate. I can explore. And with these in the scene, I can make my call on the chosen angle that I, I wish to keep in the end. I am now using a surface shader and changing its color to white. I'm doing this so when I render with the tune feature from V-Ray, I can only see the black lines, not just like you see right now on the screen. Um, it, it will mimic ink on Canva. So basically once I'm finished with the renders, I will, I will be able to use all that, bring it into um, Sketchbook. This is now available to me as a starting point for my drawing, for my different sketches that I want. And I can also render different angles and I can now render something quick, uh, have several angles rendered and I'll be able to choose from there. Now that the render is done, I'm importing it back into other Sketchbook. And from there, I'm stressing the, the perspective. That's why I modeled the cubes in Maya initially, so I could have a strong foundation for the perspective. Once I have my perspective traced, then I can start to draw the elements on it. I usually try to build my sketches the same way I would build it in 3D. Um, but you know, I, sometimes I just jump around, depends on, on what I feel. This is a lot about exploration, so I, I try to limit the um, mechanical aspect of it. For example, I started with the foreground here. I'm trying to make this as flawless as possible. One thing also, when I start panning or during the entire process, I had on another monitor that uh, unfortunately you can't see here, but on my second monitor, I had all the references from what we see uh, from the previous chapter, they're always with me. So I can always refer to it at any time. It, it is very important because you will be asked during production, during the work, you'll be asked to match or to stay as close as possible from the reference that they give you. Unless they tell you, you can take some liberties, but you should always stick to what they tell you to do. And that's why I built the concept in the beginning so I could have a solid base to start from and then as I do the work then this will always be with me it is like a like the blueprint from the entire shot this is what I'm this is what I'm going to follow and that's the concept and the reference that we gathered so once I have the base for the ground I start establishing the walls um same principle here you know uh, building building it from the ground up. This might sound pretty obvious, but many times um, you you would be surprised how what why your piece would be weak um, in an environment. It is very important, and that goes from concept until the end. Uh, 
by the end I mean compositing you shot and projecting it in 3d everything is being held from the ground like we exist because there's a ground right we're not airborne creatures so everything we build is from the ground it is the same when, when I build an environment or for that matter any artist the ground is your base it is your foundation you cannot build anything if you don't have something to stand on so I remember when I was a student teacher was pointing it out every time your environment is weak because you do not have a ground uh, I also studied comic books before joining the, the visual effects industry and every time in many occasions the shots were weak they were saying your environment is wrong there is no ground so I cannot stress enough start from the ground you will always have a, a good foundation a good base if you start from the ground also for example when you project anything in in compositing for your uh, matte painting projection even though you have a mountain with a bit of a ground or anything that has a bit of a ground if you only project it on a plane that's 90 degree angle from from the floor it will be wrong so you will have to put a ground to project it on even though and that is a mistake that you can find often where you're like why, why is that shot looking a bit weird we don't really know why well it's because you you did not project it on the ground for example that is one of the example that you can find well now that might sound a bit excessive but you would be surprised how many times i've seen uh, pieces work or, or people doing their work and they do not have a ground or they have a, a weak foundation that's very important <laughs>
point in the drawing, when I thought that this was advanced enough, I decided to go back into 3D. And in 3D, what I do is to basically build and then render those elements. So I don't have to redraw things, basically. You know, it's, it's, it's faster to just model and, and render it than just draw it again. Now you would ask, why not just do everything in 3D? Uh, the reason for that is I want to make decision on the fly. I want the uh, the uh, creative juice to flow. So drawing is is very intuitive, you know. I can just draw something really quick at the beginning and then erase or redesign something on it that's that's just addressed an element. So starting in, in 2D and drawing is is actually easier and and faster. But then once I, I know what I want, I will actually go back into the and model that and render so it's actually more accurate in the scene. Also, another thing, after having the, the sketch done or advanced enough, I go back into 3D, right? And I actually go into my library, my model library, and in there, I just look for you know, all these elements that I might have that could be trash, um, the pipes, that I don't have to draw in all those little details that, well, if I don't need to draw it and I can just render it because it's faster, then I'll just do that. I'm, I'm really trying to cheat as much as I can. Um, most of the time, time is not your ally. You, uh, at least in the VFX, uh, in, in feature animation and, and maybe other type of production, you might have a, a bit more time, but usually if you can bang something really quick that will be mostly appreciated so and if you can make it look good and it's quick then it's even better again this is just a, a way of doing it this is the way i like to do it uh, i like to start with the drawing something in 2d uh, the reason for that is because it's it's easier to actually visualize it or show it to someone that that's a line is a drawing in my opinion, I think, you know, if you start with a drawing, it could be quick and they could take a look at it and they're like, okay, change this and change that. You can do quick iterations to it. Now, if, you know, if you prefer doing everything in 3D and render, the same, that's the same thing, you know, it's, it's up to what the people prefer. Also, if you're better at painting and you like to just paint with values, it's the same thing, you know, uh, something quick, something that you can make it look good. Or not. I mean, it all depends on what they want. But whatever your your method of doing it is, those sketches should be relevant enough to show enough detail, but not too much, so you don't spend too much time on it neither. So it is a bit of a back and forth for me between 2D and 3D. Uh, I, I just like to use both. It, it, I, it depends on which one is helping me or not. If it's faster in 3D, I'll just do, I'll just render. If it's just easier and faster to draw it, I'll just draw it. So what I did here is to uh, render a really quick lighting pass. Nothing really serious about the lighting. All I wanted was just to establish forms and that's it. That, that does not dictate anything about the future of the painting. Now, I go back to my image references. The images that I, that I picked for my, you know, my concept, my sketch, I'm actually reusing them right now. Um, it is a bit of a linear process, but this allows me to make sure that there's a consistency between what I pick as a reference and what I do in the, in the concept. From there, I will pick and cut pieces from the different images that I gathered previously and incorporate them into my painting. As I go further in the painting, you will notice that the, the, the painting is actually different from the initial sketch. Um, yeah, so basically the painting is there to address the final look of the image. So it is not to do exactly what I did in the sketch, but rather what I wanted here is to make um, a continuation of what I started from the sketch. And this is basically what I'm finishing here, the final concept image. So this particular concept is geared more towards the design of a shot, a uh, map painting concept or, you know, the, an environment concept art.
the techniques that I'm applying here are mostly like, you know, it's, it's photo bashing. So this looks more like a matte painting. It is the same process that I will go later on during the matte painting. By doing this, I actually did this on purpose. So I could stay as close as possible from the actual concept once I'll be done with it. Because this picture will actually follow me every step of the, the production of the shot. So this picture will be used for the references, the concept, and also during the production when I'll be doing the reprodu reproducing it in 3D. And when I'll be totally done with it, with the 3D, it paint over, I will, re I will reuse these photos to um, um, fix and patch areas of the painting. Another thing that I wanted to um, um, suggest for people who wish to become environment artists is to know every step of the production. Um, so knowing how to concept is only beneficial for your tool bag, you know, all your skill sets that you're um, <clears throat> having. This is pretty much like building an environment in 3D. It is the same principle, except I'm just putting photos together. But if you if you look at it and step back on it, you'll see that I started from the ground as I started my 3D sketch, and the same as I will start um, the actual 3D scene. So from the ground up, always start from the ground, build the walls, and then finish finish up with the skies or what's on top of the buildings or the walls. But I strongly encourage environment artists to know about uh, painting, not only my painting, but just painting itself, uh, learning how to concept, how to work your composition and your lighting. This will come very handy later during the production itself. So why am I encouraging this? It's because this will make you a better artist first. You will develop more skills and you will be more uh, open-minded. It also support your understanding of how to make an environment. Um, you know, you know how to start it, and you all, you will also know how to finish it. Uh, when a piece of concept will, will be provided to you, you will know how to read it, because you know and you've been through it. <clears throat> you know the method, the, the methods of how to to make it. So that's that's very uh, uh, useful. So now back to the painting. I do like to stay in black and white for a long time and that allows me to actually not be distracted by the colors. I like to do it one step at a time, start with the black and white, stick with it for a long time so I can only, fo only focus on the lighting. Then once I'm done with the black and white and I think everything is working, I do step into the color. Since this is a concept, what I would occasionally do as well is to paint over with a brush. Uh, it will give it a bit of a painting feeling, but since we're not going to use this in the final shot, as long as I'm not over painting everything with the brush and make it look painterly, it, it's fine. It's, it's just for me to sometime readjust some values here and there or some colors that actually are uh, out of range or the shadows not working, uh, that, that kind of stuff. Once I start dealing with the colors, Usually, I, no I usually notice that there's a, a couple of things that doesn't work because of the black and white. Uh, a lot of mixing, especially. I'm trying to fix the color harmony as well. Um, some patches does not blend. Some patches has some bright, brighter colors or not. So there, there'll be a bit of fixing here and there to, to make sure that in the color it'll blend better. And at the end of the painting, I will spend a bit more time to brighten and saturate the parts where I want you to focus. So uh, it would, in this instance, it would be the door, for example, the right door, red, which would be brighter uh, and also more saturated. And then the ground also, I want to emphasize it a bit more. So I'm going to make it a bit brighter and, and a bit more saturated. Now, this is just one way of doing it. There's many, many ways that you can do all this. This time I decided to start in 3D. I decided to um, do a sketch because I, I, want, I wanted really to show you what you can do, what's possible. But sometimes I just start photo bashing like this with the no purpose or intent, just you know to have fun, to have fun. 
if you have time to explore. Uh, so sometimes I just start painting with values. It all depends. But in this instance, I want to go through different steps and different techniques that uh, you also maybe can apply and what you can um, use if you think one way or the other is easier for you and matches more your uh, your, your uh, skill set. 